Welcome back to today's edition of the Speed of Culture podcast, live from Las Vegas here at the Consumer Electronics Show. I am so excited today to be joined by our guest, Terrell Schmidt, who is the CMO of TD Bank. Thanks so much for joining us. It's Thank great to see you. you. I'm thrilled. Thrilled I'm, to be here absolutely. in Las Vegas. How has CES been for you so far? Yeah, you know, it's big. It's yeah, really it big. big. It is my first time here, okay. so uh, but really enjoying it and meeting people. And I've been part of the brand innovators. We have publicists here. So a lot of our partners are here, which has been terrific. And I'm excited to go to the expo, which I heard a, I heard a speaker last night talking about some of the the big new launches. And so I'm excited to go see them. Fantastic. Well, we're going to start by getting to know a little bit more about your career and background and what led you to where you are today as CMO of TD Bank. Good. Great. So you just want me to jump in. Okay, we'll do that. So I've been at TD for about eight years, but before that I've I've had a very global career, which has been terrific, mostly in marketing. And so I started my career at Discover Card. I was one of the first five people to join the company, which was fascinating, interesting time. We had no cardholders, we had no merchants. And so trying to get each other to sign up was, uh, was a super fascinating thing. I think what was great about that for me was just the ability to to dive into everything. Right. We had to do everything. It's like a startup so, mindset, right? It's, it was a total startup mindset backed by Sears. Right. So, you know, 60 million cardholder base that they had. So it was a kind of... Is that, is that how Discover got started? It is. I didn't even know that. Wow. It is. It was when Sears was doing selling socks to stocks. So who would have thought that their spinoff would have outlasted actually... The yeah, right? Off, right? Yeah, yeah, super interesting. That yeah. is true. But yeah, really, really fascinating story to watch them. And from there, I, I was with Discover for about 18 years. And the last five years, I went over to the UK and uh, stood up the marketing function and ultimately ran that function for Discover. And so they actually made a go. We launched a card in the UK. And that was another startup. That was a little bit different because we were really starting from the beginning. So, you know, super fascinating learning experience, first cultural experience that I had uh, from there. Went to Hong Kong and Standard Chartered Bank where I led, uh, ran the customer, uh, the cards portfolio for them. And then to Cigna in healthcare in Singapore and then ultimately Philadelphia and then TD and here I am. So what drove you primarily to the financial services space? What about it interests you? Yeah, I think it's a really fascinating space. I mean, to be to be honest, it wasn't something that I sought out yeah. initially That's out of college. That's usually the case with most people. Right, totally, totally. You have to take some risk, you know, decide what you're, you know, where you want to focus. But for me, what I found over the years and the reason why I've stayed in financial services with the exception of a, a nine-year stint in, at Cigna was, is really, it's just, it's a fascinating, people think of it as a stodgy industry right or they used to it is highly regulated it is it's, it's, it's highly harder regulated. to make changes than in other categories for highly sure. regulated yeah. highly regulated and you know which is very important so you really have to blend that you know innovation speed to market etc with the regulatory environment but i think what's fascinating about it it is really an advanced marketing environment financial services, you know, you've got different customers, very different segments. Customer data, lots of data. Lots of data, lots of data, more than most industries. So, so it's just a, it's a great place and it constantly evolves, um, financial services and marketing. And so being able to stay up to speed with all of that is, uh, it's a challenge and it's just fascinating and fun. Absolutely. So in terms of your current role as a CMO of TD Bank, what are your core priorities and where do you focus on on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, you know, a couple of things. I think first is uh, people. <laughs> you know, as a leader, I think it is my responsibility for particularly with my team, being there, you know, working with them on, you know, setting the vision, setting the strategy for the function, uh, which we've, you know, done. I think we've got a really clear strategy of both from a business perspective, but also marketing's role within that strategy. So a big part of that is just making sure that we are constantly aligning to and prioritizing it against that strategy. Beyond that, you know, certainly sitting at the management committee and being part of kind of where the bank is going overall. Right. It's a very exciting time. You can't be we disconnected are, from the business goals within marketing. You can't. Which often gets lost. You can't. Right. And I think that's been a big opportunity, as it is with any, I think, marketing organization, is really, 
you know, demonstrating the growth potential that marketing brings. And fortunately at TD, you know, there's a great belief in brand. There's a great belief in customer experience, which is great because that's not always true. Sure. But beyond that, we have such an opportunity to contribute even more to growth than we already do. And everybody sees that and, and frankly wants more, um, yeah. more and faster and great problem to have. Absolutely. So, you know, you talked about the people, you talked about your role with the business. What about the consumer and how do you go about understanding the consumer's changing needs when it comes to their personal banking and how does that, I guess, play a role in how you focus your go-to-market strategy? Yeah, consumer and the customer is absolutely critical. It's at the center of what we do. And I'm a big believer in insights, so we've got a great insights team and we get our insights from a lot of places. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, whether it's um, social media and social listening, whether it's from our customer experience data, which is incredibly rich. Uh, again, because we're a high transaction business, so we have a lot of data that we can look at. Um, we can look at, you know, external uh, benchmarks, we can look at un external spending and all of those sorts of things. So, you know, I think it really guides us in terms of where consumers are going. And we do a ton of proprietary research as well. We, you know, we're, we're a believer in uh, leveraging customer insights. Yeah. So I would say that's a really big part of it. The other thing is kind of evangelizing across the business for the customer. And so once you have a sense of both your brand, and we know for, for TD, roughly 65% of our brand health comes from customer experience. So, you know, Online, really, offline, the whole thing? The whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, if your brand is your promise and your customer experience is delivery of that promise at every interaction, we have a huge role to play in making sure that that's not just a marketing responsibility. Yeah. The, that the, it's, the bank you know, teller is marketing, right? A hundred percent. Right. And if they do something that's not, you know, in line with the brand or, you know, customer experience and, you know, they are at the front, front line. So, you know, we need to make sure we're enabling them, but it is it's so important yeah so with the millennial now being the CFO of the household mm. right the, the, those are people who grew up with the internet growing yes up. so it's a different customer it used to be that the millennial was your bleeding edge younger consumer who ordered in pizza and played Xbox all day now the CFO of the household right right, right. how has that changed the needs of you know your current customer and then how is TD Bank evolving to meet those needs? Yeah, it's a really good question for TD. I think T TD historically, and we, we still have a value proposition around being America's most convenient bank. And that used to mean longer hours, more days open, those kinds of things. That's sure. still incredibly important to us. We think that our That's what I think of TD, yes. Yeah, exactly. And that's and, and very and community so based. Do, and very community yeah. based. Um, and then part of that is, you know, by having those longer store hours, you're you're creating this community community relationship with your customer, mm -hmm. which is incredibly powerful. I don't, we will never walk away from that. Like that, sure. that or having, brand equity pillar, right? it is. And having that relationship then, you know, is critical. That said, you know, we obviously with, as you said, the new, you know, the digitally native customer coming up, we also have to have a great digital experience. And we've seen digital adoption increase incredibly rapidly. I think the stat is, you know, vaulted five years in two weeks during the pandemic. Yeah. And that has been the case. So it really is about how do we think about, you know, number one, we don't want to alienate the customers who come to us because they love to come into our store. They have a long relationship. So what we do, we really look to make sure that we're not doing things that would alienate that group. At the same time, we've got a younger cohort of consumers that we also need to appeal to. We call them the driven optimist. And that's the core bullseye target for us. And so we design around them, you know, increasingly expanding constantly our digital capabilities and ultimately having an omni-channel um, experience that yeah. seamless, connected, personalized is the holy grail. And we do know that even the younger consumer, you know, we, often people think, well, they're never going to walk into a store or a branch and we do have to make sure we're making it less scary, less intimidating and that's what TD does. We were very, it was seen as an approachable bank which is great but they do look and they sometimes they're like if I'm getting a mortgage I want to look at, across the eye at somebody yeah. and I need help and so thinking about how we leverage our physical footprint in a very different advice-based way while we're building digital capabilities and continuing to expand them is uh, is for us our strategy. Makes sense. And what are some of those digital capabilities? I mean, when I think of what a bank provides online, you want to be able to check your balance, you want to be able to transfer money easily. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other things that consumers are asking for that you guys are focused on 
in terms of what you're going to be delivering to them? For us, it's really around three things okay. that we know from our insights. So uh, ease, value, and advice. And okay. that is what consumers are looking for. What, the advice piece is something that I hadn't thought of. Yeah, and advice can be, you know, what we call small a advice. It can be guidance. It can be tips, you know, that you get through content and things like, like that. Like savings advice and things like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, how, how should I, you know, what tips do you have? What tools and capabilities do you have that enable me to save more easily? So it can be something like that up to and through, you know, advice for the high net worth customer or a small business customer. So it really, really ranges, but we do know that people look increasingly, you know, and you think about the landscape we're operating in right now, people, you know, they ha they need help in certain areas and when they want help, they need us to be there. So, but ease on, you know, as particularly from a channel perspective in terms of how you work across channels. So not yeah. just, you know, they're looking for an easy digital experience. We're all used to what we get on Amazon and so many other places. So we have to meet that, but it also has to be, feel seamless to the customer. And then value, you know, they're looking for value for money. What do you, you know, what are you doing? There's a big focus, obviously, now in financial never, right? services, totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and obviously a big role of any CMO is to drive growth and ultimately not only expand your current customers, but win new ones. Yes. What are some of the go-to-market channels that you've been focusing on at TD that you found successful in previous years that maybe you're really zeroing in on here in 2023? Yeah, we've been, um, you know, we're, we're constantly testing and learning. And so what we try to do with our marketing, just generally in terms of our, our philosophy, is 70% tried and true. So what we know works, 20% kind of small eye innovation and, you know, continuing to iterate. And then 10% that we're trying new channels right. and all sorts of things. So uh, we always do and we learn from that. And then, you know, that mix evolves. So for us, I would say definitely, you know, obviously the, the whole digital digital channels in terms of how we find people online who, you know, where we can get the right product to the right customer based on their needs. Huge, you know, huge. Well, it's performance everybody's. driven, bottom performance funnel driven. acquisition yes. channels. Yes. Right. So we, I, and that's probably the best way to say it. We really are focused on full funnel marketing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, moving from brand and we look market by market to understand where do we have really strong awareness. And, you know, if we have really strong awareness, for example, we may use connected TV instead of linear TV. If we don't have a base of awareness, then we might use linear and then, you know, other right, channels. Right, more top so, of funnel, awareness yeah, driving, yeah. broad-based, right? Yeah. And then as we go down the funnel, and, and to your point earlier about the next generation, not really the next generation, current generation yeah. of customers, you know, TikTok, Pinterest, all those sorts of things are uh, are absolutely things that we're focused on. And is the way that you have to story tell now different? I mean, you've been in the space for a long time. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the financial services space has evolved dramatically. Mm -hmm. Is the way that you have to story tell and differentiate the brand different now and, and is so... In what, in what ways? Yeah, if I think about TD specifically, because I think it's you know it's what I think about most these days. I think firstly everybody does because you're evolving with an evolving consumer base and evolving competitive landscape. The personalized, relevant communication and content has you know is just. It's hard to it's, execute, though, isn't it's it? It's hard to execute, yet it's like such an expectation. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's broadly across. But if I think about TD specifically, so, you know, to the point that I made earlier around convenience, we've been, you know, the unexpectedly human bank, and that is our brand proposition. So we, you know, our, our what is convenience, but our how is being incredibly human and understanding that there is a human behind every single transaction and every single interaction that we have. Like that. And that is what, you know, it, it fuels us. It's what makes us special. It's how we recruit people into TD and it's how we attract customers. Yeah. And so that's really been the focus for us. And we're evolving that to, you know, to understand kind of people, our customers and our consumers expectation, as I said, around convenience is very different, but human is, we've, you know, we know that that still really, really resonates. And I would imagine the challenge is really to pay it off at scale, right? Because humans are ultimately unscalable, yes. right? They're not machines. Yeah. So, you know, but it's you also, it yeah, I think it's also about, and we have this challenge internally as well. Everybody's like, oh, well, that's our people. And it's, it is our people, but it's our people who are doing web development right. and who are doing, you know, so. They're putting their touch on everything. Basically, even how we show up in digital channels, you know, using influencer, influencers who are relevant, how we communicate, we have a conversationalist tone. All of that really brings a human touch 
to what we do regardless of whether it's a face-to-face -face or a digital experience. Absolutely. So let's shift gears a little bit. I mean, you're sitting in the role of Chief Marketing Officer of a renowned financial institution. CMO is sort of the pinnacle title of anybody that wants to get in the marketing role. Mm -hmm. What can you kind of attribute your personal career success to? You know, where have you focused that you found have really paid off for you? And with that, what advice would you give to younger people who want to end up in the CMO seat one day? Yeah, so I think a couple of things. One, for me, and I'm, I don't perceive myself as a big like risk taker in the, you know, the way of being risky. Right. However, I was open in my career, open to trying new things, um, open to moving and, you know, taking on new roles and getting new experiences. And I think that's really helped me. Um, number one, it's actually given me so many different perspectives. So for me, uh, you know, the international experience, the global experience has been really important in terms of when you think about empathy and when you think about different customers and, you know, diversity segments and all of that, I, you know, just I feel like I, I've gained personally. Cult, different cultural. Different cultures, yeah. different insights, you know, and what makes people different, but what makes them the same. And there's a lot of that, too. So I think for me, that's been just a critical part, I think, of how I've gotten to where I've gotten to and the career, you know, that I've had that I've loved. But beyond that, you know, mentors. I think I think the role of mentors is really important. And it's not only people who will tell you all the good, but it's people who are going to give you, you know, some hard messages. I've heard the, I heard the same exact thing in the recent interview as well. It's yeah. funny you say that. Yeah. And I, you know, the, the ones that stand, the things that stand out for me, and the people that stand out for me are those people. And you know, on the positive side, they've always done it in a kind way, and you know, with the goal of I want to help you be, you know, your best self. Yeah. But I think because we all have blind spots, right? There's all totally. things that we do that we're not seeing, we're missing opportunities. Right. And usually, you know, the people who work for you aren't going to tell you that. The people who you work for might not feel like they can tell you that if you're generally doing a good right. job. So, where you, how are you really going to improve? Who's going to really show you yeah. what you're not seeing. Yeah. And men good mentors can really do that. Yeah, that's right. And typically, I think you know. In the back of your mind, of you tend to know. So it's just somebody reiterating and saying, hey, by the way, yeah. <laughs> right? And you have to be open to it as well. You do. Yeah. You do. I really do think that openness and all of that, you know, is uh, is just such an important thing. Finally, what I would say is for anybody, I think, you know, being willing to have a lattice career as opposed to just ladder, you know. What do you mean by that? Meaning that you're not just constantly worried about, well, I have to go from this level to this level to this right. level. But you know what? In order to do that, I'm, you know, A, I, I really want to get there, but I also might need this experience over here. And so I'm going to go sideways. Sometimes people are too opportunistic. Maybe they get a pay raise or, or a promotion title and they're going somewhere where maybe it, the opportunity long term isn't as good or they don't have the expertise right. there or something. And they find themselves maybe thinking that they're going forwards, but you're taking one step forward, maybe two steps back at the same right. time without seeing it. Yeah. And, I, and again, it comes back to mentors and leaders who are also fostering that. Yeah. For me, when I worked at Discover, I worked for a CMO who, and, and maybe this was a little too frequent, but every 18 to 24 months, he called the whole team in and he's like, okay, you have now this job in marketing and this is your new, new boss and this is your new team and we would all change roles. And P&G does that a lot too. They're, they're do famous they? for doing that. Yeah. Yes. It's, I mean, it's great because actually you often think, eh, that's not that interesting. That's not where, kind of where I want to take my career. But the sum total of those things is really powerful yeah. when you look back. It gives you diversity of thought. And I love the global angle as well. I think too many people are uh, don't understand that when you, you talk about the consumer, there's a whole world out there, consumers mm -hmm. all experiencing things differently. Totally, totally. How did Curiously TD look at the sort of whole crypto craze? Had you guys ever looked at getting into that? What are your personal mm. thoughts on on cryptocurrencies and other alternative financial assets and the and the boom and bust that we've seen? More at what, what you think about it. With the industry, yeah. I mean, I you know, there probably is a room for, there probably is room for crypto, I think. You know, we have, of course, we've looked at it. It's, yeah. you know, it's very much um, in our space, for sure. And so, you know, we constantly are looking and tracking and, you know, assessing opportunities, assessing, you know, is that part of our strategy or is that not part of our strategy and when and how? 
And so, you know, I think it, you have to, you have to be open, especially when you look broadly at the category in financial services and you have neobanks and you have all these specialist fintech. banks, you have fintech, yeah. you have crypto, you have NFTs. And so you really have to be choiceful in, yeah. in your strategy. So I, I would say that's really how we think about it is um, keep a watchful eye and, you know, decide when, if and how uh, that is part of, of what we want to do. Yeah. And, and speaking of fintech, I mean, there was a lot of deregulation, as you know, that happened for a period mm-hmm. of time in the financial services industry, which opened up the path for many new emerging fintechs, yes. whether it be companies like Square or Chime or somebody yes. out, others That's out there, right. Plaid, et cetera, to really gain a lot of momentum. How do you work with some of these emerging players in this space, whether you're just learning from them or partnering them, et cetera, how does TD sort of open itself up as an interface to work with these emerging platforms? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a good question. And we do, we have, we do both. One, number one is we study them. Mm-hmm. We understand where they're really good and where, you know, what we can take from that and learn. And there, I mean, of course, there are a lot of learnings that you can get yeah. uh, from those various players. And then we do, you know, we do partner with some. We have, uh, you know, pretty big innovation team that sits up in Canada with people, you know, obviously in the U.S. as well, who constantly are looking at, you know, who and how do we want to partner to further advance our capabilities and, again, in areas that are really in focus for us from a strategic perspective. Absolutely. So we're here in Las Vegas at CES, a place where, you know, I've been coming here for several decades, and Mm. it used to just be the Panasonics and Toshibas of the world, the companies that made actual consumer electronics, and now you have companies from apparel and fashion and financial services all Mm. here, which is fascinating to me in terms of how this has evolved. What made you want to come to the CES show and what are you looking to get out of it um, here? Mm. For me, it was really more about outside in perspective and it's really easy, especially in today's fast paced world and as we're all, you know, online constantly, it's really easy not to look up and look out. And I think you really have to make a concerted effort to get out, meet people, um, learn from people, as you said. And so that's why I came and also had a great opportunity to meet a couple of people and to, you know, to have an opportunity to speak with people like you. And so it's been great so far. And I agree. It's uh, it was fascinating to me listening to about some of the innovations in cosmetics, right? right. Where you're thinking, well, what really like I, what could be what's the applicability? What? Right. right. And um, well, really it's fascinating. The same consumer, though. Right, and Same, totally. so the trends of the consumer are going to impact how they shop, how they access That's their right. money, what they buy, et cetera. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So to wrap things up, is there kind of a phrase that, or, or kind of quote that you like to live by in terms of that's driven your career, sort of like your mantra if you had to pick mm-hmm. one? Yeah, I, you know, I always say, and this is, I, I, it might sound trite, but it really is how I try to live my life, is Maya Angelou's quote around, people won't remember what you say or did, but they will remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, my view is we all get a chance at this, you know, once, and um, people really matter. They really matter. And uh, it's why I'm actually so passionate about the TD brand and being unexpectedly human because, you know, it's just uh, at the end of the day, that's what we all are. It's all human beings. differentiator, too. Totally. Absolutely. Well, we're going to wrap it up with that. On behalf of Susie and Eddie team, thanks so much to Terrell, CMO of TD Bank, for joining us at this busy uh, CES. Uh, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.